Have any of you ever worked with bees? It's just fascinating. Yes. Um, <laughs> we have a hive in our backyard at one point. Um, that's legal, I think. You, know, like that. Uh, you can also have two chickens. And they can You cannot have a rooster. And I don't blame you. But um, in the neighborhood we live in, North East Lincoln, um, there used to be some sheep that would come into a grown pasture in this sheep's yard every summer. Just delightful, you know, to be in town and have all this livestock. Mm-hmm. I don't think the neighbors appreciate it. And some people had a lot of chickens in there. So. Anyway. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I consider those chickens. <laughs> But I don't know. Chicken, and you know, black stars are a little different. It's just easier to go to the food co op for the But those brown ends are too And 
I thought they were really cute. We thought they were so cute back then, you know, Tom. And we had about an acre, and, um, and then they started eating our trees. And the evergreens, you know, evergreens don't just pop back from that kind of thing. There's like one that was all the way down to the ground, and it's just, you know, got this little cave in it. So, thanks. Anyway, so Tom says, planting opportunity. It's always like a number of Anyway, I don't know what that has to do with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Whole Summers. Whole Summers were like this. A rock garden thick with tiger lilies and weeds. Robins bobbing heads into thin grass. A lily pond blooming with green algae. Some windless days in year stopped time. A girl and a dog wandering from house to grow, past a shaded cemetery where pets turned to compost, past bar barn loft, through the outbelt of fuel and pasture, sidestepping dung puddles, piles, following a cow path, past the windmill and stock tank and gawking heifers, down a cord grass swale to circle back, shortcut through nettles and barbed wire, over a ditch to the country county road, the girl killing time in the heat leading her cooch toward the farm place like relatives returning after a long lost absence, walking down the gravel lane and up the rock path, lighting on crude, crude log chairs, surveying the gardens that were surely a refuge to her homesick grandparents, viewing them now in mid-century ruin the elaborate, overgrown scheme of iris and pea vine and redstone, enough almost to one day break her heart. <laughs> My grandparents uh, came over from Denmark um, to farm in Northeast Nebraska, and um, they um, really had a wonderful, it was at the turn of the um, and they had a really nice little farmstead and kind of did things in the landscape like they remember back home. You know. um, but of course, they tried to recreate some things. They set for seeds, as I understand it, and they grew up with trees. But um, my grandma was very much from home. So I will end my meeting. Um, with a tribute to Nebraska and maybe um, our state by a newer form, and I knew this was going to happen. I'm not sure I'm going to get it out here. Oh, I changed my mind. I'm going to read this one. Yeah. It's called Nebraska. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to end with this one. Um, this is a new book. Um, we'll be in a new book in that next year. Um, and this was after a wet spring like we had this year. Um, oh my gosh. I'm going to start stuff raining. But um, anyway, this is called After a Rain. After a rain, I yank weeds in the flower bed. Crabgrass and foxtail, the usual suspects. And because moisture is abundant, seedlings of maple and ash, my own private forest, which undeniably multiplies beneath the windbreak I planted years ago, where thanks to birds, scores of young cedar, mulberry, wild cherry now tangle. For now, I concentrate on these outer place plants that arrived by airwaves last season, graceful, in their single and double wing submarines. As a child, I welcomed those helicopters, gathered them, and climbed to the height of the windmill to send a bucket full twirling toward the gravel farmyard, my own private landing strip. And Father, recalling the dirty thirties, years when heat and drought ganged up, seared young corn crops in fields, turning them white overnight. Today, I count blessings. Cool air, a rainbow of blooms, 
damp earth. Even lame gutters unattended sprout things leafy and green. Would Father grin at my yard, its overly dense and grandiose scheme? Birds at the feeder make a joyful noise. I stand up, lightheaded, giddy. If I spread my arms, I could more or less abandon myself to the wind. Thank you.